Hello everyone, welcome to another dose of positivity. Today I am joined by Carolyn Shore from Shore Good Associates. And Sure Good Associates is a training and human resources company that includes Alert at Work and Remedies, which I love, for sleep. Um, so Carolyn specializes in sleep disorders, fatigue management, stress management, and so much more, which I will let you talk about today. But today we're actually going to talk about how sleep can either be adding to your stress or sleep can help you manage your stress. So thank you so much for joining me today. Thank um, you, Lord. This is a really big topic for me and I know for so many other men and women because we never get enough sleep. <laughs> um, and I know for myself, when I don't sleep well, I don't think properly the next day, I don't eat properly the next day, I'm just, kind of a mess and it adds to the stress load yeah. um even just for example this weekend i had a it was self-induced but i went to bed very very late and i was up very early and okay because i was so tired i did not eat well the next day at all because i was too tired to cook a healthy meal so i just ate whatever junk was left over from the event that we had <laughs> um and then i really couldn't even function properly because it was only a couple hours of sleep. So I'm so happy that you're here today to talk about this. So before, I love talking about sleep. <laughs> I love it. Well, you are the expert. Well. So before we get started, I just want to know a little bit more about Sure Good and Associates. So what can you tell me a little bit about what you do with regards to um, sleep management? Well, with uh, Sleep Mat, Sure Good Associates provides a, a number of different program offerings. Yes. But our focus, whether it's in the corporate arena or the individual, is about based on the premise that really goes to what you're just saying is that if you're sleeping well, then all the other pieces of your life work better. Yes. Um, so in the corporate arena, it's more about. Um, being alert so that you're safe at work, so that you're not sick, so that you're not missing days of work. Yes. So that's more the corporate interest. On the personal side of things, it's people who are really experiencing um, problems sleeping and just want help with that. Yes. Uh, so how do I sleep better is primarily um, the issue on working with individuals. Exactly. So I have those two sides to my practice. So with, uh, with the sleep management, it's um, not only seeing individuals and trying to help them individually, but it's also providing yes. education. So I do that as well because I talk about um, uh, why do you need to sleep? What are the benefits of sleep and why we yes. should sleep more and, and why you need to diagnose sleep disorders, all of that kind of thing. So I have that educational aspect to it. Yes. Um, but also the, um, the, the personal um, assessment and um, and providing solutions for someone who isn't sleeping well. So that's primarily um, what I'm focused on. I'm really glad to hear you sort of give your personal experience of yeah. how you feel when you don't sleep. Um, and you know, that's the awareness that you have that I was feeling this way because I didn't sleep enough. Yes. Is an awareness that um, I, I think most people realize that sleep is important but they don't really um, pay much attention to the outcomes of not sleeping well. Very much so. Yeah. It's like sleep is getting in the way of doing everything else, but they don't realize exactly. that not sleeping is actually getting in the, the way of exactly. doing so much. And so when I do presentations, I have a little phrase that I encourage people to consider, which is um, sleep before chores. I love that. Because people tend to, as you're saying, to just kind of think, well, I have so many things to do, and if I give time to sleeping, which in their view is a waste of time, yes, because um, we see sleep as you're laying there, you're, you, what are you doing? You're not accomplishing anything, right? Yeah. And we are so focused. I say that we worship at the altar of productivity, and uh, because 
Um, we just, it, it's so important we get our value by being productive, by getting things done, you know, yes. that's, that's how we think we're going to be a success. And so I like to focus on this idea of sleep before chores, because yes. you know that when you've, um, as you're saying, with, um, the day that you were tired, that um, you don't get as much done because you're having to repeat things, you make more Ugh. mistakes, you forget things, and you get really frustrated, right? So Very. Yeah, so then you're not really as productive as you would want to be. Whereas, if you've slept well, and you have energy, and you feel yes. good, and you're in a good mood, then things just seem to go they along. They flow. They flow, absolutely. Like yesterday, I was really stressed, and I know that I, I, I had no reason to be stressed. I was prepared for everything I needed to do this week, but I was just, I was, I was irritable. It was really affecting right. me and my body, and I was so irritable. And I knew why, because I'm very aware of it, like you said. But today, I had such a great sleep last night. <laughs> so today, I just jumped out of bed. I was happy. I was like, what was I worried about? So that really rings true to yeah. that sleep really does help people manage stress, right? Yes, absolutely. And so that, um, uh, I guess one of the other, uh, one of the reasons that people don't get enough sleep is because they don't realize the benefits that sleep uh, brings you. Yes. So sleep is the primary way by which we uh, gain our energy. Food is the other. Yes. But, but sleep is critical in being physically, emotionally, mentally uh, refreshed. Yes. And so when we come to talking about stress, so then if uh, right off the top, if you have a day where um, you haven't slept well, so you're irritable and all this kind of yes. thing. And all of the things that come at you all day long. I mean, we, you know, you know that there's going to be stuff coming at you all day long, right? And that's life. Exactly. Yes. And so here you are. You've started your day. I say, on an empty tank. So much because so. you haven't you you haven't slept. So you haven't gotten the yeah. the refreshment, the that the energy that sleep would give you, yes. and so now you're starting your day in a deficit. So sleep um, um, fills your tank, and with uh, deep sleep, we're getting physically regenerated, physically refreshed, so that we have physical energy. Yes, and with um, dream sleep or REM sleep, where we are dreaming we um, work out our emotional issues and we become emotionally refreshed. Which I love. So that's kind of uh, the premise in that if you've slept well, then at least you have, uh, you're starting your day with the yes. energy that you need to deal with everything that's coming your way. Um, but um, in terms of managing the stress as well, so you can think too about on a day that you're uh, really stressed, you need as much energy as possible to deal with all of that stress. So much so. Right. Because yeah. you know that thing that people say that, um, I, I I don't know if everyone has heard it, but it's this thing about, I had this much patience left and you just stepped yes. on it. Right? So it's yes. that idea that, um, you know, I'm really stressed out and I don't have, and, and part of stress is kind of gaining control of your situation, but you need energy to be able to do that, right? Exactly. Um, so if you haven't slept well, you're already starting with not very much energy, and then um, even if you have slept well, and all of these things are coming at you, all of that energy is being depleted and being depleted. Yeah. Um, and so then the other side of it becomes really important is that uh, if you've had a very stressful day, one of the ways to get back to being more centered and more well balanced and, and balanced, yes, is to get a good sleep. And you see, sometimes when we're very stressed, that actually, ironically, becomes a time when it's very difficult for us to sleep. So you've seen, yes, uh, you know, people who are very stressed and are having problems sleeping, and I see them all the time. Yeah, um, and. So that, that's very common because very. one of the things that happens when you're very highly stressed, maybe let me, it, okay, so w when you're very highly stressed, you have very high levels of uh, particularly cortisol yeah. um, um, surging through your, um, uh, through your body. That's actually for a, a reason in that when you have these high levels of cortisol, you're able to, you know, in the 
um, old um, kind of caveman times is you're able to yes. run fast exactly. and get away from danger, right? Yeah, or hunt your food or... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, yes, right. exactly. Um, and if it's a, um, a, a situation that's um, a very short-term kind of thing, yeah. then that cortisol subsides. Yes. Um, and when you go to sleep, then you're not feeling so stressed and you're able to fall asleep. However, in our society, unfortunately, we have so many things that are coming at us all the time. All day. We're feeling so stressed, exactly. Yes. So even though I always say we don't have the saber-toothed tiger at our heels, yes. but we perceive all kinds of other things. You know, we have yeah. financial issues, uh, you know, um, work issues, family issues, all kinds of things. Whether that are it's good or bad, it. even, Exactly, right? Yeah. exactly, right, you know, but we're just, and part of it is like we're going all the time, and so yes. that going all the time, and then you don't eat well, and all of those kinds of things. Yes. So our cortisol level is really high when we're very highly stressed. Now the issue for that with sleeping is that sleep is a physiological process. We are designed to sleep. Yes. And there is a physiology that comes into play that puts us to sleep, okay? Part of that physiological process is having melatonin, which is a hormone. Yes. And it's the hormone that signals the body that it's time for sleep. Time for bed. Yeah. Yes. And so we tend to feel somewhat more sleepy and it's harder to stay awake and so forth. Um, and those two hormones, the melatonin and the cortisol, operate kind of as a yin and yang system. Yes. At, you know, at night, the melatonin is higher because it's prompting us to sleep. And in the daytime, we actually need some level of cortisol. Of course. To, to be alert. Yes. Right? Um, but the problem then happens is if we're so highly stressed that that level of cortisol is so high and stays there and stays there yeah then when it comes to sleeping then the melatonin can't overtake the cortisol it can't yeah. do its job right I, I say it's like spitting in the wind yes because it's it's up against this wall of so much cortisol that the melatonin really can't kick in so the result of which is at a time when we're really stressed and we really need the benefit of sleep, yes. we're almost less able to get it because physiologically we're not ready for sleep. And that makes so much sense because especially from my end um, as a health coach, it makes a lot of sense. I have women coming to me with hormonal issues and a lot of times it's not really um, that they have thyroid issues or a hormonal imbalance, it's because they have so much stress in their life and they live in that high cortisol level where the saber-toothed tiger is always chasing them. They yes. believe that everything that happens is the saber-toothed tiger, as right. you referenced, and so their hormones are all out of whack. Mm -hmm. It's because uh, the cortisol <clears throat> takes over everything. But once they manage their stress, and I hear them often say, one of the things I ask is, you know, what is their sleep patterns? How much sleep do they get a night? And the first thing so many say, I don't have time for sleep. Exactly. And it's like, well, do you have time to be sick? Exactly. So it really rings true to that. But oftentimes, um, what happens is it becomes a bigger problem and people really do need stress management or they or they do have an official right. sleep disorder. So when someone comes to see you, what can they expect when they come to see you? Because so often people won't find help because they don't know what to expect or that it's even out there. Yeah. So it's um uh, for sure, I see a lot of people who have sleep problems because they're very stressed. Yes. Um, and and one of the things about it is that it's uh, when when you haven't slept for a while because you're stressed, you develop an insomnia. Yes. Which means you can't fall asleep or stay asleep. Yes. So you develop an insomnia. If you haven't uh, managed that, so either you haven't gotten your stress down or you haven't figured out how to sleep better, and, and most people have tried all kinds of things, right? Yes. Um, but it becomes an issue that um, now you're living with the insomnia. Yes. Okay, so now you, you just, okay, that's just This my is life, natural. Right, yeah. Yes. Um, and so you all also have to manage not only getting the stress down, but you have to actually 
almost reteach them how to sleep because yes. they become so accustomed to not sleeping well, you know, yeah. that they have to learn that sleep is actually there for them because they no yes. longer believe that. So when people come to see me, one of the things that I, um, uh, well, I always start with asking lots of questions. Yes. Because what I'm trying to, um, people are quite aware that stress is going to cause you sleep problems. Of course. And sometimes they come and just say, you need to help me because I'm so stressed and I'm not sleeping. Yes. But what I have found is that people have, um, are sometimes not aware of all of the things that may be happening for them with their sleep. Exactly. So I always start, when someone comes, um, I always add, I take about an hour to ask lots of questions wow. and they're very targeted to um, how are you sleeping, what's the problem with sleeping, what else is going on with your life. I do a very broadly based health assessment so that I have some idea of is it just stress Yes. or is it another sleep disorder. So I'm looking very specifically for other symptoms of sleep disorders, yes. all of those kinds of things. Um, yep. So in that first hour when you come to see me, I'm just asking you lots of questions. I'm trying to get the information that yes. I need to be able to say this is what's happening for you. Is it a, it, so it's a very detailed discovery session. Is stress yes. causing you to not sleep or is not or is a sleep disorder causing exactly. the stress? <laughs> yes. uh, exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's a really good point because what I have often said is what you need to figure out um, is, is sleep the problem? Yeah. In which case you have a sleep disorder which is undiagnosed. Yes. Or a sleep a symptom of the problem. Exactly. So for people who are, I don't mean to diminish this, but if stress is the only problem, okay, then then we deal with the stress and sleep is not so much the problem. It's, yes. you know, it's being manifested as a sleep problem. Exactly. But we need to fix the stress issues and all of those kinds of things and then you will sleep better. Yes. So that's one of the reasons for the really very broadly based um, in assessment because yep. I'm trying to sort that out. Exactly. So that's the first part of coming to see me. That's the I first that. hour. Um, the a first appointment with seeing me is a minimum of, of two or two and a half hours. That is amazing. Is <laughs> yes. But it's amazing because it's important for you. Like, how often do you go into a doctor's office and you have 10 minutes and you're just like, but no, you're not really getting to the core here. Like, right. <laughs> there's more exactly. to it than this. Because right. they're just fixing that's the actually symptom, one of the... but you're fixing the problem, exactly. not the symptom. Right. Yeah. And that's actually one of the questions that I ask is, have you spoken to your physician about your sleep problem? Yes. And you know, interestingly, lots of people say no. Yeah. Lots of people do not perceive sl having sleep problems as having a health problem. And so they will not tell their physician. Yes. And uh, I've just, I've just become accustomed to people, that's people's perception of Yeah. It. But even if they ask their physician, the physician will do what you say is, you know, you've yeah. got 10 minutes and that's not a diss on a physician. I mean, that's They're, the way it works. They've the got 10 minutes, exactly. tell me what the problem is, here's this, you know, and that's the way that goes. Anyway, so the first hour is just collecting all of this information. A full discovery session. Exactly. Yes. That's a really good word. I and like I, that. And I love that yeah. because it also gives people a chance in that hour to tell their story. Absolutely. And I'm sure you've had and tears you don't know how so frustrated. how important it is for people to be able to tell their story yes. and feel that they're being listened to. And that you understand. Yes. So, and that brings me to something really important. Because, because, oh, sorry, you know, I'm interrupting, yes, but you know, okay. one of the things that people feel when they have a sleep problem, and, and maybe you find this with, with your clients too, is that they feel that they're the only one that has this problem, <gasps> I'm right? all alone. And they, yes, yes, exactly. And no one understands what's happening to me and all of that kind of thing. Yeah. So to be able to say to someone, you know what? Um, this is a typical way that this happens. Yes. This, this is a disorder that other people have, you know? Um, just, just it, it, it's amazing how yeah. that just, the other thing that I find too is asking all of these questions of people because we normally don't think about our sleep very much. Yes. Um, when I ask these questions, people often go, that's an interesting question. You know, I've never really thought about that. Yes. And it, it causes them to have a greater awareness of what's happening and exactly. why and all of that kind of thing. Because so often I find, especially women, 
Um, they don't have time for sleep, or so they think, right? right? They're, they're, it's not that they don't have time, yeah. they're not making the time. Um, because the saber-toothed tiger is after them. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what happens though is when they do come and see you, they get an opportunity to share their story with you, and all of a sudden, they make them important because they mm -hmm. never make themselves important. Yes. And when you're asking them questions about them, it makes them feel really important because they're so used to taking care of everyone else, which is exactly. usually why they're not making time for sleep. Exactly. So all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, not only am I understood, but someone is making me feel really important. Yeah, and validated. Yes, yeah. I would love to know how has this, because you are like, uh, you're an expert in this and you help everyone else. How has this knowledge helped you personally? Well, for me, it started a long time ago. Um, I uh, did the original research and looking at sleep issues yes. probably well, 40 years ago, probably. Yes. A very long time ago. I know I only look like I'm 39, but really, you know. I love it. That's because <laughs> I, you sleep so well. <laughs> I can live in denial only so long. I love it. <laughs> um, no, um, I came to this because of my own issues, not so much around having sleep problems. Yep. Um, you know, sleeping was never sort of an issue for me. What my issue was, was sleeping at a time when everyone said I should be doing it. So oh. it came down to the fact that I'm a night owl type. I saw that on your website. Right. I I'd love to learn more about that and, too. Um, and we live in a, what's an, a, essentially scheduled as an early bird world. Nine right? to five, and then we're in bed by nine. Exactly. Yeah. And, <laughs> and up at yes. six, right? Yes. And so I always struggled with that. I struggled with that from childhood. And when I got into university, it was a really a big problem because my classes were all at 8.30. I had to walk a mile to, to the university. Yeah. So, you know, I was just, so I never made an 8.30 class on time. I always, you know. You were sleeping. I, yeah, and I, I slinked in, you know, 10 minutes late into the class and all of that sort of thing. So I really made a concerted effort to uh, say I'm going to bed earlier, I'm going to, you know, get up earlier, I'm, you know, going to be like normal people. Yes. So, you know, you're you're talking about stress. So this was a huge stress for me. Yes, because it was I natural. Just, well, and I just felt like I wasn't fitting in with the world and I was never going to be successful. And I, so that was a very big stress for me. Yeah. So I tried very hard to be a night owl type. It ended up, I got sick. I was having headaches. Wow. I, I was not successful. I was not feeling healthy. And at some point it just came to, you know, I, I don't know why I am the way that I am. I yeah. just know that if I work on, on a schedule that feels more appropriate to me, yes. that I am less stressed, I am healthier, I am able to be more successful. So I made that decision. But at that time, I wanted to know why that was. Was it because I had yes. some psychological problem? You know, what would, I always blamed my mother. I always said, well, you yes. know, I, I, it was just convenient to do that. Exactly. And just kind of tongue in cheek, you know. Exactly. Because it was as much of a hassle for my mother as it was for yes. me. But long story short, I then did the research. It was my original research. And I um, discovered that I was this way because I was physiologically designed to be this way. Wow. Being a night owl or early bird type, and there is also an intermediate type, is a physiological characteristic. So in the way that you have dark hair and dark eyes, yeah. um, uh, those are genetically predetermined physiological characteristics and being your circadian type, which is what it's called, yeah. is, um, is a physiological characteristic that's predetermined. Um, so once I learned that, then I really went on to say, I don't know how I'm going to fit this being night owl stuff into the into the world. Yeah. Um, but I just know that that's the better way for me to do it. Wow. So that's how I came to it. So my specialty with sleep started with understanding circadian rhythms and how those function. And then I went on to work with shift workers because circadian rhythm disorders, that's their big issue. So important. I get right. that question all the time, just nutritionally. Well, what do I do for a regular 
three meal day because I work shift work. So yeah. it's the same thing with sleep and that I'm sure you get a lot of people who come to you because they're like, well, what do I do? Well, with shift workers, actually, it's interesting is that a lot of them just get to accept that this is my life. Yes. You know, and they live with the idea that, you know, shift work is, is terrible and I just have to suck it up and do it, right? Yes. And one of the things that I try to say to shift workers is no, it does not have to be that way. It, it is a, it, I see so many successful shift workers yeah. that it just, you know, there is no reason, but there is a, a one very fundamental reason for what makes you a successful shift worker. And that's what I get into in my seminars and my presentations is yeah. that you've got to, to know this. And when you know this, then you're going to be able to manage your life as a shift worker much more. I love that. And I love that you took something instead of just trying to conform to what everyone else does, <laughs> which is what this, which is what this is all about. This, right. this feature that we're doing and we're talking about in all of these videos is there is more than one way because you are yeah. unique. Every yep. single person is unique. And I love that instead of just trying to conform to everyone else, you decided, well, you know what? I'm going to find a solution. And then you took that research and created an incredibly successful business out of it about helping other people and then continue to build on it. Right. Yeah. Which I absolutely love. Yeah, and that's uh, in terms of managing stress, I think that's a really critical thing is to know what is your particular. Yes. Um, you know, issue, I guess, you yes. know, what, what is it for you? Yeah. Um, so for me that, that was the issue. And you know, again, in terms of managing your stress and finding your way, it takes a great deal of courage. It does. You don't know how many times I've had to explain to people, yeah. no, I'm not going to be there at seven 30 in the morning, you know, because yeah. I know that for my own health and well being, that yes. is not a good thing to do. And, uh, you know, I have a business. I have to, you know, meet clients at eight o'clock. I have to fly out at six o'clock in the morning. And, but I have put into place a process that allows me to do that more successfully yes. so that I'm not feeling all out of control and I'm not feeling all stressed about it. So I've had to work at it. And I, you know, I that's, that. that's a piece of it is that, you know, with the sleeping and the stress and stuff, you have to be very, very conscious about saying what works for me, finding out what that is. Exactly. What works for me. And then being very, I, I say courageous about, you know, saying, yes. and you know, saying to people, no, I can't do that. Or, yes. or this is not going to work for me because I know I'm not going to feel well if I do this. Um, yeah. So it, it's a very, it, to this day, I still have to explain to people, no, this isn't going to work for yes. me, you know? Um, but I'm in the privileged position of, you know, I can set my client times and, uh, you know, lots of times. I can't yes. always control it, but, um, yeah, so I just feel that for me, in terms of being yeah. able to sleep better, I have to sleep on a schedule that's appropriate for yes. me, you know, and um, and that's one of the things that I do when I when I see people is because frankly, a lot of the people that I see that are very highly stressed, very fatigued, and don't yeah. have a lot of other symptoms. Those are their primary symptoms. They're very stressed. They're very fatigued. And when I do the discovery session with them, as you're yeah. saying, what I find is that they are actually night owl types trying to be early birds. Wow. And when you say to them, do you know that this is happening? And they just go, oh, I never really paid attention to that, you know? And I love that. Sometimes because they just try to follow the same path exactly. everyone else did. This they is what's try normal. To fit in. This is exactly. what's normal. Right. Wow. And that's one of the key things in sort of understanding your sleep and your stress. Yes. Is is to know this what is your circadian type. I because love that. that's, you know, for a lot of people, more people than I would have ever imagined. Because you know, when I was struggling, I thought it was just me. Exactly. And it was only till I started to talk to other people that I go, Oh my goodness, is you know, and that's that's partly why I wrote the original book because it was, I was explaining this over and over and everywhere I went, people's, oh really? And oh, you know, and I just got tired of explaining 
yes. all the time. So I thought, no, I'm just going to put it all in a book and you can read the book and I, and love that. I don't so have to explain it. What is did. the book called? If people wanted to get the book, what is the name of the book? The book is called Birds of a Different Feather. Um, and, you know, it's that idea that we say night owls and early birds, but they're birds of a different feather. And how can people. <laughs> and right now, it? it's only available as an ebook on. Um, Wonderful. Yeah. So oh, that's just a sign Amazon. of the times now. Everyone <laughs> wants an ebook. Um, so it's available as an ebook, and um, yeah, so you can just easily so go on and get your it website. There. Yeah, you go to the website, Perfect. or you can just go to Amazon. Whatever. Well, I will put that link oh, um, thank you. in the video, so we'll put that yeah. there because I know a lot of night owls, um, and it's very challenging for them because they start to pop up at 10 p.m. and I'm like, um, it's 10 p.m. Oh. <laughs> you know, so, you're so not I know a lot. I used to be a night owl. Um, and that was a big part of a lot of my own personal issues was, but I was going to school full time and bartending full time during college. Oh, okay, so okay, okay. I, I just didn't so this sleep, is but it's good to know that who you are. Right. And that's so one key. of the things that I'm just going to clarify here is when you're saying that you used to be a night owl. Not you, naturally. Exactly. Yes. That's the point is that we're forced into schedules that are not physiologically appropriate for exactly. us. Exactly. So there you are not being an, a night owl type, but having to do that. Yeah. And the opposite happens where you have night owl types who are forced to be at work at 7, 7.30, even 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, is very difficult for them, yes. you know, and so then they have lots of issues. <laughs> exactly. So we know we now know how people can contact you, and all of that information will be uh, part of the video. So it'll just be down below, so people can go to your website, okay. contact you. Is there anything right now that you're working on that's new that you'd love to talk about? Mm. Um, well, what is new is uh, it's not necessarily a um, one of the things that I've done is I offer a variety of programs that yes. somehow have sleep at, at the root of the uh, the um, of the issue. So I've always worked with shift workers. I've done a lot of work for shift workers on how to sleep better, feel better, yeah, um, um, I, and managing fatigue and um, and part of being a shift worker is managing the stress of course and um, so broadly based health issues and I do stuff with conflict as well in managing relationships because wow. people um, uh, and it didn't come so much uh, managing the conflict and dealing with relationships is something that came from way back on, on stuff that I used to do around change and all of that kind of thing um, but what I have done recently, a couple of things, is one is I've put a couple of those programs together in what I'm calling um, Healthy Workplaces in Healthcare. Yeah. Because nurses and healthcare workers particularly have all of those kinds of things. Yes. That are part of their life. Exactly. So shift work, fatigue, stress, conflict and relationships oh at work and all of those kinds of yes. things. So I'm putting those all together as kind of one umbrella for that. And will that be um, an online program or something that um, you're doing in a seminar format? It, it's, it'll be both, actually. I am, I am going to, which then leads me to say is that one of the other things that I'm trying to do is in terms of managing my own stress is perhaps to travel less. Yes. <laughs> and instead of doing all the online seminars, which I'm happy to do. Yes. Um, but... Um, and one of the th and healthcare and shift workers is an example of that is on-site seminars are difficult to to do for them because people on all different shifts exactly um, you know and so who's available today you know half of the other group is not and so forth and I often see uh, where shift workers will come to a seminar because they're you know asked to come to a seminar it's at eight o'clock in the morning and they're coming off a night shift and they're coming to the seminar. So they're coming to a seminar to help them manage stress and they're and already stressed when they get exactly. there. Exactly. Yes. Yes, they have a, I mean, it's ridiculous. And then they won't sleep and then they have to go back to work the yeah. night, that yeah. night, right? So, so it's it's just not managing wonderful. the workplace. And so that's part of the healthy workplaces in healthcare as well, 
is how do managers need to manage things exactly so that it's easier for the worker yeah so my so what I want to do then um, is to uh, for a variety of reasons is put a lot of my presentations and resources online wonderful um, so that people have access whenever they want to have access to it and uh, well, I love that so and I look forward to that because it's a really great opportunity especially nowadays because how often do you hear I don't have time to have anything online yeah so this is a really great opportunity and not just to work with people locally but to touch people across the right. world which is so important and that's one of the things and I think that you do that too is I will see individual clients by Skype because yes. I actually do have to see them. I, I yes. can do 90% of the discovery and the teaching and providing the, the answers to their very specific solution. And that was uh, something that I wanted to say too. You were saying about what will people get when they come to see me. Yes. Is after I do this discovery process, I actually spend a lot of time saying this is what's happening and why because that gives people back sort of oh, a measure of control so much so. right of just understanding that it's yeah. it's not just something beyond their control and they're helpless yeah. they gain back a sense of control and then I provide very specific solutions for exactly what's happening for you yes. so I'm not just picking things exactly I'm yes. not picking things out of the air I'm saying for your particular situation here yes. is what's going to work and so you don't have to go on the internet and say maybe I'll try this and maybe I'll try that I know so which causes what's more going stress to work for you I right? call it Google stress yeah because people <laughs> think great. I'll just go to Google yeah. and oh there's but there's 35 million answers yeah and, and nothing is unique to them and and you see all kinds of things yeah. that scare you Oh God! And, all of and a cause sudden. you more stress because you yes. think, "Oh my gosh, this could." Happen. I'm dying. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas you know, if you yes. don't pay attention to. Yeah. Not that you know that's not necessarily a bad thing, but. Um, it's anyway. nice to have the access there, but it's really yeah. important for them to work with an expert to really get a plan that is unique for them. Yeah. And this is where I do actually need to see them because, as I say, 90% of the questions and the information that I provide, I can do just orally yeah. right yes but it's very important for me to actually see the person and because that gives me a lot of clues about what's happening for very them. very much so and some of that is indicative of particular sleep disorders but I have had people say right in front of me sitting at my desk if I say how tired are you feeling today and they will say you know today's a pretty good day I don't feel so tired today and in the meantime, they're holding their chin up on my desk. Yeah. And I'm going, seriously? I, are you seeing what I'm seeing? They're not being honest. Oh, they have no idea. Yeah. And that's one of the things that happens is probably with people who are stressed uh, for a long time, but people who haven't slept well for a long time, feeling stressed and feeling fatigued and tired becomes your new normal. It's so, you become habituated to that yeah. feeling. Yeah. So that you don't even know how tired you really are and how stressed oh, you really are. I love until that. Until someone sort of holds up a mirror to you and yes. goes, this is what I'm seeing, right? And yeah. they look at that, they go, oh, seriously? Um, so, yeah, that's quite interesting. So I do have to see them, but I can see them yes. by Skype. You know, exactly. they don't have to be where I exactly. am. Exactly. Yeah. So I love to ask this question because I think it's so important, especially for us who are just, we, we love to help people. Otherwise we would not be entrepreneurs and have these businesses. What is your number one desire for not just women, but just for people in general? Uh, and related to sleeping or just generally? Just related to what you do because okay. you do what you do for a reason. And right. what is that number one desire for you that you want um, from them? My, my number one desire actually goes to something that you've already um, mentioned is that I would like for women to understand um, that uh, how important sleep is to them but to give them to feel that it's okay to give yes. themselves the gift of sleep love that that they uh, you know that that they give them the, themselves this gift of wellness Wow. And of having the energy to go through your day. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that that's my really greatest desire is that 
that you get to a place where you say that it's okay for me to sleep because yes. even though I don't have the Halloween costumes made and I don't have all the laundry done, yes, it's more important for me to sleep and get so the rest much. and the energy that I need. That's that's I really that. I would love for women to come to a place where that's okay. Yeah, that that they're important. Yes. Ah. Oh. I could talk to you all day. <laughs> I could talk to you all day. I just love this because whether it's sleep or it's nutrition or it's finances or it's whatever it may be, I just think that this is like right in the center of all of that. Yeah. Um, and it really can have a domino effect on absolutely everything. And something that you said about it being normal to feel in a negative way or normal to not sleep, Something that I think we need to end with is just for people to understand that it's not normal to feel sick all the time. Mm, it's not yeah. normal to feel tired all the time. Normal should be feeling amazing. Yeah. Obviously there's going to be moments within the day where we do feel stress or we deal, do feel fatigue, but for the majority of the day, that should not be the case. The case. So thank you so, so much. Is there anything that you'd like to end with? Because again, I could talk to you all day. <laughs> so is there anything you'd like to end uh, with? No, I, well, except to say thank you very much for this opportunity to oh, chat with you the on, pleasure's all mine. on a subject that I feel very passionate about. And obviously I can tell. You do too, so. I do. <laughs> yeah, so thank you. And, Perfect. Um, yeah, You're welcome. Your and everything will be on uh, just underneath the video so people can contact you and okay. learn you. more. And hopefully buy your ebook, especially I know some people I will be buying that ebook for for Christmas. <laughs> so thank you so much. You're quite welcome. Perfect. Thank you.